Hello, welcome to the lecture series on vehicle dynamics. In this chapter, we will talk about tire modeling. Initially, I'll just explain the tire construction and tire specifications. Then we will discuss about various tire characteristics and the various tire model, models which are very popular in Adams modeling. First, let me, though this is not the main idea, just for putting the base for understanding of tire characteristics, I am just introducing this. So, tire, first let us start with something like tire construction. See, in the past, tires were constructed with cars at a 60 degree angle to the direction of travel. They were called bias ply tires. Probably you see here, if I magnify in this region, this region, you can see here, these are radial plies. In the bias, they were like this. <coughs> so one layer this way, another layer this way, so on like this. So in use, the bias plies rubbed against each other resulting in internal stress and heat. The radial tire developed in 1946 is constructed with cars at a 90 degree angle to the direction of travel. You see here, if, if this is the direction of the travel, these are like this. This is what I am talking about, 90 degree. Okay, this reduces internal stress and allows the tire to tire tree to lay flat on the road, which provides more traction and improved fuel efficiency. So, radial tire casing is made up of series of layers or plies. The material of which may consist of polyester, rayon, or fiberglass. Over this, over this, we have steel beds, this one, steel beds, okay, constructed of woven strands of steel cord. Radial steel beds provide better traction and protect against punctures, okay, right, other thing is you see here, as I have shown here, these are radial plies, then steel beds, you can call them. These are called cap plies. This is known as shoulder. These are known as sipes. These are grooves. This are tread block. This is known as rib. This whole thing is called tread area. Okay, right. Then tree design. This particular thing I am talking about. You can see each design is different. That means this has different purpose. The tire tree design determines whether the trail will provide a comfortable ride one good traction and long tree life so there is something like all season tree design it provides comfortable ride good traction and wet and dry pavement all season steel built at radial tests offer a good value computer design laboratory testing results in a tree design that provides a comfortable ride along with superior handling and better grip on the road but these high performance tires cost much more if you ask for a snow tire tree design provides maximum traction on snow but you should use them only during winter months if you run them on dry pavement you will experience a rougher ride rapid tread wear and lower traction in all season tires so know your geography of your place the kind of roads that are available 
and accordingly it's better to choose the tire trade light truck tires provide a rougher ride but are designed to support a higher load carrying capacity than passenger car tires okay all right so so i am not talking specifically about why they have designed like this what are those ideas and all that so i do not have that uh, knowledge here right now there is something like uniform tire quality grade labeling they call it as utqg uniform tire quality grading so in a, the national highway traffic safety administration which is part of the department of transportation requests that tire manufacturers perform tests and provide uniform tire quality grade labeling on all tires sold in united states well, available everywhere now so the utqg labeling which appears on the side of every tire helps consumers compare the specifications of tires however all testing is done by the tire manufacturers and independent testing by consumer organization has found that the label information is often inaccurate anyway so here there is a maximum load rating that information is available here I think in this region again tread wear tread wear tread a tread wear traction and temperature grades this information be available maximum permissible inflation pressure that information will be available here there will be tire name this is for passenger car this is the tire width this is the aspect ratio radial tire rim diameter load index and speed symbol correct again us dot tire identification number severe snow condition that related information tire ply composition and materials used this information these are all the things that are available okay now let us look into the details of these things one of them is traction rating so there is a b and c so a means the tire performed well on wet asphalt and concrete road B the tire performed well on either wet asphalt or wet concrete but not both C the tire performed poorly on both wet asphalt and wet concrete okay that is traction rating speed rating you can see here M N P Q R these are the symbols that they use and miles per hour they use okay the speed rating specifies the maximum safe sustainable speed that the tire can handle you may not intend to drive at speed over 99 miles per hour but a high speed rating indicates that the tire has solid con construction and won't fly apart while you are driving at expressway speeds okay these are speed rating symbols and the uh, maximum speed right load index you can see here these are the index and this is the load that they can take the tire's load index number indicates its load carrying capacity the maximum weight each tire can safely handle the higher the number the greater the load carrying capacity 
similarly temperature resistance here again there is rating abc so here a the tire ran at 115 miles per hour for 30 minutes without failing b means the tire ran at 100 miles per hour without failing but not at 150 miles per hour 115 see that tire failed at 100 miles before running for 30 minutes okay that is the meaning of that again maximum pressure the highest pressure in psi that a tire should be inflated to okay a lower pressure reduces the load that the tire can safely carry too low a pressure could cause the tire to separate from the rim causing rapid and catastrophic decomposition a higher pressure produces a rougher ride too high a pressure could cause the tread to separate from the tire causing rapid and catastrophic decompression age of the tire so here they will give which week it was manufactured and which year it was manufactured in all that the serial number or identification code stamped on a tire you can determine the year and the week of the year that it was manufactured look for a designation beginning with dot the week and year of the tire was manufactured is contained in the last four digit of the number that's what i mentioned here also they mentioned the trade wear rating okay these are some of the informations that will be available on this okay fine so depending on your requirement you can choose the tire <coughs> now let us look at the tire characteristics here it is tire slip ratio for acceleration when i taught you traction control system i think i will explain this tractions this is called traction slip ratio so basically it is omega r by minus v by omega r that's what we write okay 100 percent slip means you know that one 100 percent slip means that is onset of spinning and the tires perform very well when the slip is approximately 20 percent this is the thing okay so this is where it is maximum this is for the traction similarly for the braking if you look at again it is defined as v minus omega r by v this angular velocity of the wheel radius of the wheel its vehicle speed when it is 100 percent means locked wheels after that the wheel skids around 20 percent you can see there's a maximum value available so when we explain the concept of abs i think i explain it's around 18 to 20 percent this where exactly maximum u value will be available means normalized maximum normalized braking force will be available similarly here maximum traction force will be available so this is how the tire behaves similarly if you have a tire whenever there is a cornering then there is a lateral force because of that the tire slip angle comes into picture this i have already explained here let us look at this tire characteristics i have drawn tire characteristic here this side the max braking force this side i have drawn traction force this is slip ratio for braking this slip ratio for traction and these are tire slip angles 
suppose if I take 2 degree slip angle 2 degree slip angle correct so the maximum traction or breaking brake force will be available at a slip ratio of say around 20% maximum is that okay if the slip angle is high higher the force will also reduce the maximum force will also reduce break force available is reduced it is preferable we should have smaller slip angle uh, on the acceleration side you can see over here okay i have to write draw vertical line maybe some area around 18 percent two degree slip angle that is where the maximum traction force will be available as the slip angle increases the traction force availability start decreasing maximum traction force availability start decreasing that's why i said make more than one if you exceed you will get locked wheels here you will start getting the spinning of the wheel vehicle sorry vehicle So again here lateral force versus slip ratio braking, slip ratio traction for different slip angles it is shown, right? So you can read the value you want, you are looking at. So at a given slip angle as the slip ratio increases the type capacity to support a lateral load diminishes slip ratio increases slip ratio increases lateral force decreases okay for a given slip angle true right peak tractive forces are present at slip ratios that differ slightly between braking and forward traction maybe this is a 20 degree this may be around 18 degree 18 percent 20 percent of slip or it is around 18 percent of slip at any given slip ratio the lateral force capacity increases with increasing slip angles you see here as the slip angle increases lateral force increases same here lateral force versus slip angle for different slip ratio this is for the traction this is for the brake okay and this is lateral force versus slip angle curve drawn from here you can find cornering stiffness coefficient that is c alpha is equal to f y by slip angle alpha we can find from here okay that's fine sir now this already I defined lateral forces for slip angle different i think vertical loads i have shown here load 1800 1350 900 like this so tire manufacturer tire uh, this is from the book Millikan load calculated C alpha normally what is the pound per degree pound per radian this is cornering stiffness okay so right from that testing they have done like so lateral force versus slip angle these are slip angle these are lateral forces uh, then this is 1800 1350 load 900 load. keeping inflation pressure 31 psi so again it is called tire carpet plot so it is useful these kind of plots are useful by choosing the tire um, for the vehicle 
or while designers it becomes very useful while doing the vehicle dynamic calculations so you have lateral force here then you have slip angle then you have normal force suppose if you know the normal force if you know the tire slip angle what is the maximum lateral force it can take same lateral force coefficient versus slip angle for different vertical loads given right lateral force coefficient similarly aligning torque i have explained aligning moment <coughs> you know that here this is mechanical trail and this is pneumatic trail total trail and aligning moment you have, i have explained this correct now aligning torque versus slip angle again different vertical loads that you can read that okay from this aligning torque carpet plot also you can read these values same way we can do the camber thrust okay lateral force the camber angle if you know that and what is the vertical load that is acting from this we can write the we can read the lateral force that is available so lateral force versus brake force correct different slip angles and all that we can draw and we can draw that friction circle that is mu g right m circle so all these properties we can obtain on this see this is on this side it is braking force this traction force you see here slip ratios correct and another thing is slip ratio is given different slip ratios provided so using these kind of plots is possible to read the various properties okay okay if that is the case how do we draw this graphs by simulation that is where the tire modeling comes into picture so basically done this work on adams so here from the adams define the tire which tire you want choose the tire model to be specified also on which kind of road it will work road models also available that also you choose make the vehicle run on this road model simulate a model and you can draw the characteristics which was talking about correct probably then we can go on varying the properties so which are all the popular tire tire models there is 521 tire model first tire model in adams then we have fiala model then peseka it's pronounced pe seka peseka sometimes pesejka like this 89 or 94 and 94 model also you have 2002 model then you have f tire model non linear type then pack then there is 2002 model ua tire model that is university of arizona tire model pack mc like this many models are available so in this based on this model i need to give the various properties based on the properties it will calculate the characteristics and draw the plots okay what all the kind of input parameters that we should be giving it what is r1 the unloaded tire radius r2 the tire caracas radius the tire radial stiffness longitudinal tire stiffness lateral tire stiffness based on what exactly we will be requiring c gamma lateral tire stiffness due to camber 
rolling resistance moment, radial damping ratio, the tight to road coefficient of static friction, tight to road coefficient of sliding friction. Okay, all these input parameters have to feed it to the model. The advantage is you have to go give 10 input parameters required. So it has many problems. It ignores the influence of camber angle. The lateral stiffness of the camber angle defined in the parameters is not used for calculation. The combined braking, come cornering or braking, come driving cannot be modeled. So lateral force and aligning torque due to camber angle effect is not modeled. Variation in cornering stiffness at zero camber angle with the tire load is not considered. So basically in this model, right? In Peseca model, these are all going to be the input parameters. Okay. So get the properties, then put the tire, then study the behavior of the vehicle. That's the thing. Finally, you can ask the tire manufacturers to manufacture as per those properties. Okay. This is 2002 model. There are too many parameters in this case. This is what we have to input as parameters. So this is UA tire model parameters. So now the tires that we use for the vehicle, you see here, should satisfy handling characteristics, ride characteristics, chassis control, and durability. All these things it has to satisfy. So handling means what all related issues parameters under handling stand stills and start parking standing on tilt row table steady state cornering lane change braking distance braking power off in a turn vehicle rollover online scaling type properties these are handling related ride related cornering over uneven roads braking on uneven road crossing cleats and obstacles driving over uneven road okay all these these issues it should handle it is nothing to do with the comfort this is to do with the maneuvering okay next chassis control more to do with vibrations again it is something to do with ride only correct and durability okay these are all the things if you look at you see here on this modeling all the models have been used various types of models so which model there is no model which will satisfy all the requirements for a tire correct so again it depends upon what purpose I'm going to use the vehicle like here you can see if you say this not possible to not realistic what we get this is possible this is better and this is best to use correct if you look at this model f tire model specific model this is this model you know meet somewhat most of the requirements when you make a comparison so if you are basically handling and all those kind of a thing i think pop 2000 model is very very good meet all your requirements maybe a passenger car we have to have everything of it i think then f tire model seem to be better correct uh, what are the inputs parameter for F tire model? I have not given here. Correct. Anyway, this is available on Adams and we can use this model and we can model our tire characteristics, generate tire characteristics for this from this tire model. Okay, basically, into the V, as you have seen from 
earlier explanation how exactly tire plays an important role in acceleration performance braking performance cornering and still i have not discussed about uh, the ride in all these cases the tire plays a very important role so what mechanical properties the tire should have to meet all these requirements so why i'm saying mechanical properties you can see over here these are tire uh, what is that vertical stiffness vertical damping rolling resistance most of these are all the mechanical properties what we are talking about so what so we have to when we develop a tire so we use as you have seen the various belts and other things correct so how we need to choose the property of this raw materials and how exactly the construction has to be affected to achieve those requirements that is basically the idea so as a designer i am more interested in generating this kind of graphs and say that for my vehicle this kind of a lateral load this kind of a vertical load this is the kind of slip angle this is what i will be requiring to achieve those kind of these values then the tire material and the tire construction details have to be figured out okay fine thank you very much